Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I am so excited to be painting something for spring with you guys. We're gonna be painting this cute little spring birdhouse design. It has like a cute little flower and a watering can. And boy, this one was a big one because it's almost as the same height as it is as it is the same width. And so it was a little big for cutting out on my Thunder Laser because my Thunder Laser is a Nova 24. Um, so I had to remind myself, because I've only done it a few times, how to use the pass-through door to cut out something bigger than the laser. So stay tuned for a video on how to do that, because I did video the entire process. Um, not just for you guys, but also for me, because I only do it ever so often. So I kind of like needed to make my own tutorial video so I would remember how to do it every time I get ready to do it. But um, we're going to be painting this fun design live with you guys today. Um, I forgot to grab an egg carton, so I'll just get this one right here. How are you guys? So y'all say hi as you come in. Tell me where you're watching from. Is the weather beautiful there? <clears throat> We've got people on TikTok watching and on Facebook, so y'all say hi. Um, by the way, I did put the link up in the video description above for the design you see hanging behind me. It's called the Happy Flowers Door Hanger. We're going to be teaching it in a workshop March 22nd and 24th at 7 p.m. Central, both nights. We're going to be teaching how to do the leopard print in the background, how to paint those flowers and the wording and everything. Um, awesome. Watching from Lubbock, Texas on TikTok and Panama City. Oh, it's raining in Panama City. Well, for once, it's nicer here than it is at the beach. <laughs> hey, Julie. Carol from California. I just got back from California. We were in San Luis Obispo last week. Good morning, Jacqueline from Clinton, Kentucky. All right, so the original design for this door hanger had a green uh, birdhouse with a green roof, but I kind of want to change that up a bit, and I'm using the Rainbow Paint Color Pack. This is a special pack that Deco Art put together for me. It says Rainbow Tambra's Rainbow Picks. Um, you can find it at the link um, that I put in the description. Just search for Rainbow Paint Pack, and you'll find it. They are all Americana um, matte acrylic paints, so they are great for painting door hangers. So I think I'm gonna paint the background of our door hanger, this yellow that's in there. It's called cadmium yellow. It's a nice sunny yellow. Um, and then we'll do some trim with green and a pink flower and a turquoise watering can. And then we're gonna do some lettering on here as well because it says hello spring on the top. And then um, we could put some wording here on the um, watering can if we want to. Hi Donna from Winchester, Kentucky. I'm located in uh, Benton, Kentucky. Or close enough to it anyway. I'm kind of halfway between Benton and Murray. All right, we're gonna get a fairly large brush because we're working on a large area. So I'm gonna use this one. It's a little over an inch wide and just get it a little bit damp, but you know, wipe the excess water off of it. You don't want it dripping on everything. Get your yellow paint and just start laying it down. <laughs> if you're wondering about the glasses, Cindy, they are from Pear Eyewear. Um, I have shared them in a previous Friday Fab Five video. If you want to text me, I can give you the actual link to them. Um, my text number is up in the video description. Um, but they have these fun little toppers that you can change out to change the look of your glasses for each day. So every time I get ready to go live, I choose a different topper to kind of um, go with my mood or my outfit. But I chose this one today because it's got these fun little flowers up in the corner. Can you see them? They're kind of like kind of like Easter lilies. And I thought it would be perfect for our spring door hanger we're doing. You know, Tara McBrain that we shipped to you yesterday is wanting to know if your she's on and your glasses wants to know if they're Kirby. Uh, so no, the shape of these glasses are not called Kirby. They're called Larkin. Um, there's different shapes you can get from pair I wear and mine in particular are the Larkin shape. shape. You like my nails too? Angela, I'm gonna be sharing more information about my nails on Friday in this Friday's Fab Five because they're not what you would think. They're not acrylic or powder dip. They're a type of press-on nail. And I've had these on, it will be two weeks on Thursday. And I'm blown away at how awesome they've been. So I'm gonna share more information about those on Friday. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about our upcoming workshop? For the, door, the Happy Flowers Workshop, it starts March 22nd. You can sign up for just $10. 
Um, if you have already signed up and you cannot find your template or where to go, um, we have sent you an email. Now, the email takes a few minutes to get to you. I know sometimes with the lightning fast of internet, we think things should get to us like that. But it takes a few minutes, sometimes up to 15 minutes before the email actually hits your inbox. So after you sign up, give it a few minutes, and then you should get an email, and the email will have information about joining the Facebook group and all of that, and then everything you need is inside that Facebook group. So go, be sure and go shine, shine up, shine up, <laughs> sign up if you haven't yet. Um, if you don't have a wooden round to paint on, we have those for sale in our shop, but you could also cut your own. It just needs to be 18 inches in the circle, or you can get one at your local craft store, like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, wherever places like that sell stuff. Um, just trying to think. You're also going to need graphite paper and paint. Now, if you have this rainbow paint pack I'm using today, um, eight out of the 12 colors in this paint pack are what we're going to be using on the workshop design as well. So definitely go order that from DecoArt. <clears throat> And if you can't participate live with us, we, you will be able to watch the replay for up to a year. So um, if right now life's a little busy and you just don't have time, you can paint live with us um, a little bit later when you do have time and catch the replay. Have I missed any good questions? <laughs> what do you do if your paint covers the lines? Oh, so if you're painting on the, one of these uh, laser etched door hangers, it's okay if you get over the laser etched lines. Most of the time, you can still see those lines through the wood. So notice I have painted over this entire... Sorry, could you say that again? <laughs> Siri always interrupts me in the middle of a live. Um, so if you notice I've painted over the wording up at the top. That's because it's easier to paint over it than it is to paint around it. Um, and you'll just have a smoother finish at the end if you just paint over it. Um, but I can still see the lines to the words even after I've painted over them. So you don't have to, like, you don't even really have to stay inside the lines. Like right now, I'm kind of being willy-nilly with it and being kind of messy with my paint. And I got it all over my little watering can here. But we haven't painted those areas yet, so I'm not too worried about it. I can just kind of quickly lay down the paint and then paint over those areas later because I can still see the etched lines. Hey, Megan, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm glad you're here. What's the last day they can sign up for the workshop? So the workshop starts on March 22nd. So as long as you sign up before that date, you're good. And it's only $10. And a lot of people that end up participating in this use up, usually end up giving these uh, door hangers as gifts or selling them um, on their Facebook page or at craft fairs. So just know that you do have permission to sell what I'm teaching you to paint. And so that can help you actually make a profit off of the workshop that you're taking. And it's like getting to learn to paint for free. Do you know if you're going to paint the welcome or the <clears throat> So I have, um, when, I, when I painted the one behind me, I recorded it. So I have the recording of me painting the Hello Friends one. But when we paint live, I'm actually going to do the one with the word welcome. So you can see what they, like, what they each look like. What color yellow is that? Chelsea, this one is cadmium yellow. It's one of the colors in this rainbow paint pack from DecoArt. Let me go ahead and dry this. How do you do colors without having to paint two coats? Oh, we'll probably still have to do two coats. Um, I am putting it on rather thick. If you noticed, I worked from the top down and um, I just tried to make sure I got a good thick first application. Now on the second application, I made I may apply it a little thinner. That's usually what I like to do. Heavier on the first coat, thinner on the second coat. Um, and you just, it, it, with yellow, you almost always have to paint at least two coats. So just be prepared. <laughs> uh, this shirt was a Cotton Chaos design that they were selling back in December to raise money for the tornado victims um, from the county next to us that got hit, Mayfield, Kentucky. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they're still selling it or not, but cottonchaos.com is where you can find this shirt. Um, sometimes I do a base coat under colors if I'm afraid they're not going to cover well. Sometimes I do that under yellow, but this yellow 
generally does a pretty good job of covering. Um, and I, I don't necessarily need this yellow to stay super bright. I don't mind it being just a little dimmer. Um, so it depends. Like if you want if you want your yellow to be bright, bright, really white, bright, <laughs> white, bright, um, paint, painting a coat of white under it will help. I just skipped that step this time. Um, and it may cost me. I may have to do at least three. I may have to do three coats of yellow on this. But I'm going to see how far I get here. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. But make sure and dry your first coat really well before you start on the second coat. Linda says, I love that template. Where did you, where do you find it? This is one we released in the shop a few weeks ago. I did put the link up in the video description for you. It's called the Spring Bird House. You can find it at shopdoorhangers.com. Marie says, I'm loving yellow this spring. I've been picking it a lot lately. I'm, yeah, I'm, it's, it's making me feel very excited about spring coming up. So I don't know why, but I'm in the mood for some yellow too. And yellow is not usually my go-to color. Hey, Brenda, how are you? <laughs> um, fun, fun stuff. Somebody said I don't have captions turned on on TikTok. How do you do that? Can you turn on captions? Hold on. Let's see. Comment sections. I don't see any options for that. Maybe I don't have that capability yet. I don't know. I'm double checking. Make sure I missed didn't miss it. Uh, now, I don't see a setting for captions. So if anybody knows how to do that, definitely let me know. Hey, Sandy. Hi, Annette. <laughs> uh, so this is a laser cut wood blank. I cut this one on the Thunder laser. So see how the edges are nice and like charred and black? I don't generally paint the edges on a laser cut blank because it's really hard to get the paint to um, cover well on that charred edge. It just keeps soaking in over and over. So um, it's almost easier just to leave it unpainted and it doesn't look bad. It looks nice and neat and clean because of that black edge. But if you're painting on one that's maybe laser cut or not laser cut, jigsaw cut or scroll saw cut and the edge is the same color as the wood, um, you probably will want to paint the edge just so that it doesn't look unfinished. <laughs> you guys are loving my glasses. Thank you. Okay, I think this is nice and dry enough, so let's do a second coat. My brush is nice and damp, too, because I dropped it down in the mug. Um, so I'm just going to use a, a pretty damp brush. It's not dripping, but it's definitely wet to apply this second coat. I, I feel like when your brush is nice and wet, it helps that second coat go on just a little smoother. And if you feel like your paint is not smoothing out well, because it has a tendency to grab onto the, the first coat really badly, and you can have a hard time smoothing it out. So if you feel like that, definitely just dip in a little bit of water, and your second coat will go on much smoother. And since this is such a large area that I'm working with, I'm just um, squirting the paint directly onto the door hanger instead of taking the time to dip it out of an egg carton because that just takes extra time. Okay, let's put a little bit more there and there. We'll just distribute it. <clears throat> I think two coats is going to work though. covering so good that I'm actually having a harder time seeing my wording through the paint but I think sometimes when it dries the texture of the etched lettering shows up better so hopefully that's what happens and I don't have to freehand my lettering. Kelly's asking when will the templates be ready for download for those of us in the Happy Flowers workshop? So in the Happy Flowers workshop in the Facebook group you can go download the template right now. Um, and there's two versions of it. There's one that says, hello, friends, like the one behind me. And then there's one that just says, welcome. So depending on which wording you want, you can download both, but you can pick which one you want to paint. So go join the Facebook group and you can find it in there. If you're having troubles finding things in the, the Facebook group, check the tab that says guides. Um, that's usually where we have everything organized and easier to find. 
Okay, now that I have everything covered with a damp brush, I'm just smoothing out some of my brush strokes that look a little uneven. Looks pretty good though. Uh, no, I never sand my door hangers after I cut them on the thunder. The only time I have to sand anything is if there's a tiny little area that maybe didn't cut all the way through. Sometimes you'll have like a little piece of wood or something that's like a splinter. Um, and I may have to like, get a little sanding block and kind of knock that off, but it's never any really big deal. <laughs> it's cloudy in Texas today. She said that yellow is my sunshine. Yes. Suzanne's excited about the workshop. Wonderful. How many of you guys are really excited about that workshop? Uh, yeah, on face on TikTok, if you're asking about the wooden blanks, we do sell these designs. You can paint yourself. You can get them two ways. First, there's a template. That's a printable piece. Let me just show you an example. Here's a template for the Happy Flowers workshop that we're doing. You print it out on your computer and then tape it together. It's about four sheets of paper. I think maybe six sheets. Um, you tape it together and then you trace it onto the wood using graphite paper. You can do that with any of our designs. They're for sale at shopdoorhangers.com. Um, now, if you're the kind of person who's like, I, I don't know how to use a jigsaw or a scroll saw, I would rather just buy the piece of wood and paint it. Those are called blanks. That's what we call these blanks. You can find them as well. Um, and they come in different sizes. They come as small as six inches or as big as 20 inches. So the one that I'm painting today is a full size 20 inch door hanger. Um, you can also get like a 12 inch if you want like something to attach to a wreath or something like that, or just to sit on a, a shelf. Um, but they do come with the design laser etched on them. So you won't have to freehand the words or any of that. It's all right there on the wood for you. Um, so Sandy, for the workshop, we're not selling this design laser etched on the wood because it's very strategic. It's because I want to teach you guys how to use the templates and the graphite paper. Because once you figure that out, the sky's the limit for what you guys can paint and create. It's a very useful skill that I need you guys to learn. So um, we're not selling the etched blanks to this design. Just know we're providing you with a template. You're gonna need some graphite paper and we're gonna show you how to make it happen anyway. Uh, you thought I was swirling a coffee mug and waiting for the spill. <laughs> nope, nope. Um, also, the other thing about the templates is if you have a laser machine of your own, because I know a lot of people watching on TikTok right now probably follow me for my laser cutting videos, we sell the SVG files that you're going to use in your laser machine. Those come with the template also. Also, you guys, before we move on, because I know I will forget this, I wanted to tell you that I put in the video description, and it's also linked on TikTok, a link to my ebook. Now, you may have already downloaded the ebook before. It was, we have revamped it, renamed it, completely rewritten it. It was called the Door Hanger 101 ebook, but the new version is now called the Beginner's Guide to Painting Door Hangers. Um, we have updated it. It's got a bunch of new links to videos and links to um, supplies and things like that. And it's got way more information in it. I think it's about 30 pages long. Um, and so it's got a great shopping supply list on there for people who are beginner door hanger painters. So go and download that. I've put the link up above for you. Okay, let's do some happy mail, shall we? We always like to give away something while we're on live. So if you're watching right now, um, let me know what is your, what is your favorite color this spring? Is it yellow? Is it purple? Is it pink? Turquoise? What is your like happy color that makes you think of spring. Comment that color name and we will pick somebody at random to win some happy mail. The workshops are the best. Thank you, Melissa. I think so too. Okay, I'm seeing TikTok says lavender, baby pink, turquoise, sky blue, purple, pink, light purple. The next color I'm using is called sour apple. So this is also in that rainbow paint pack we were talking about earlier. You can get it on Deco Arts website. Yellow and pink, turquoise and pink. Flamingo pink. That's a very specific color, but I like it. Turquoise. 
All right, our happy mail winner is Tanya Kennedy. Congratulations, Tanya. Send us an email with your address and we will mail you some happy mail. All right, let's see what this sour apple color looks like. Look how bright. We're gonna use this kind of like for the roof of our birdhouse and for the little like ledge here at the bottom. It covers pretty well. I still think we'll have to do two coats just to cover up the wood grain, but it's doing a good job so far. By the way, if you want the supply list for this project, all you have to do is text LIST to my text number, 270-207-9091. If you need to screenshot this right now, I'll hold it up for another three seconds. Um, but you can ask me questions about door hangers. You can say, hey, Tamara, I need the link to the glasses you're wearing. Um, or you can just text me pictures of your projects. I love to see your projects. But text the word LIST, and that will get you... Um, the supply list for this exact project. It'll have a link back to this video and all of the color list, colors named, listed, what am I trying to say? <laughs> it'll have all the colors we're using listed out for you. Um, and it'll also have a place where you can go and get the template or the blank if you need it. And by texting us, that gets you on our um, list to be, to be notified when I go live. So if you enjoy these lives, we will text you every time we go live. I switched to a smaller flat tip brush to do this area. This is like a little half inch wide or maybe three quarters inch wide tip, flat tip brush. And these brushes are from the DecoArt website also. I love them. Okay, I'm gonna slide it up a little bit because I gotta paint this little ledge down here at the bottom. What size is the round board? 18 inches. Hey, Debbie. Welcome back. Oh, that's a good point. Brenda says the JPEG file can also be used to cut out a template on a Cricut. Yeah. So if you're a paper crafter, you could even use these designs to cut out a cute little uh, spring birdhouse out of paper or maybe vinyl or whatever you guys make on your Cricuts these days. I say scrapbook because that's how I got my start in crafting. I bought a Cricut back in 2009 and started doing paper crafting for scrapbooking and card making and stuff like that. And that's how I started learning how to make my own uh, SVGs or vector graphics because I wanted to customize the scrapbooks that I was making. And now I have three kids and no time to make scrapbooks. <laughs> what time are you going live in the workshop? Yeah, so the workshop is on March 22nd and 24th at 7 p.m. Central, both nights. 7 p.m. Central. We'll be giving away lots of goodies during those lives, too. We've got some $100 gift cards to the Deco Art, uh, not Deco Art, the Deco Exchange um, website where you can buy ribbon and all kinds of goodies. We've got some paint packs like this to give away. Um, what else? I think we've got some easy bow makers, all kinds of fun stuff. And then we've got two bonus videos for you guys too that show how to make a bow. So if you struggle with bow making, there's a, there's a video showing how to make this bow. And then there's another video showing how to make one that's a little less complicated. It's a little bit easier. And it's made with scrap pieces of ribbon that are about seven inches long. So if you just have a bunch of scraps laying around, that bow uh, video will be awesome for you. Don't you worry about getting paint? And, no, I don't worry about it too much. But let me kind of show you. Like, so when you go to the, when you're painting the edge of the design, um, it, instead of pushing the paint over the edge of the wood, kind of do like a little sweeping, flicking sort of motion. And it keeps those bristles from going over the edge of the wood and getting the paint on that black edge. So if you have a hard time keeping the paint off the back of your door hanger, it could be that you've got too much paint on your brush and you're just sweeping that paint off the edge of your door hanger and you don't even realize you're doing it. So try to just keep a little bit on your brush. Don't get too much and make, make the most of it. I'm trying to think how to explain this in the way that makes sense. Keep most of your paint toward the, the middle part of the design. Like I'm painting this little ledge here. Keep most of it in the middle and then as you get less on your brush, 
just kind of flick it over the edge there to kind of make sure you don't scrape any over the edge. So let me show you. See, the edge is still nice and clean. And then we're gonna do this side. All right, she's asking about the background template for the workshop. The background template. The leopard. Oh, so the leopard print on the Happy Flowers design that we're gonna be doing is all free-handed. Don't freak out when I say the word free-handed. It's gonna be easy. And we're gonna practice first on cardboard. So if you have a leftover like Amazon Prime box or even just a scrap piece of paper handy, you can practice on that before you actually start doing it on the wood. It's not gonna be hard, I promise. You don't need a template, you don't need a stencil, you can do it free-handed. For those of you who have participated with me in a workshop before, I would love to hear a comment, like if you will comment and let me know what your experience has been. Um, were you pleasantly surprised, for example, that you could paint a door hanger? Maybe it turned out better than you thought it would. Were you, um, like, what was your experience? How did, how, did, how did learning from me help you accomplish your door hanger? I'm always curious to hear what everybody kind of gets out of these workshops and how, how they enjoy them specifically. Teresa says, I cut it out with a jigsaw, so I paint the edges black. You can totally do that. I've seen some people use, um, like if, you, if you're using a laser cut blank even, and you get paint over the edge, somebody I've seen will take like a paint marker or a Sharpie to like just color over the area where they accidentally got paint over. <laughs> Teresa says the workshops have got her hooked. <laughs> um, let's see. On TikTok, somebody said, thank you. We just started. Okay, well, definitely go download my Beginner's Guide to Painting Door Hangers ebook. It's up in the TikTok link. Jordan says, learning from you just gave me the confidence to try. I love that. Thank you. All right. Are you going to be tracing the flowers or are they freehand too? No. For five, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Flowers are not freehanded. That's hard to say fast. Um, no, they're going to be traced on with graphite paper, and they are on. They are on the template. So I showed you guys earlier these templates. This is what the template looks like. So the leopard print is not on the template. But can you imagine if the leopard print was on this template? How much stuff you would have to trace to get on the wood? It would just be overwhelming. So the leopard print is freehanded, but it's going to be easy. I promise. Just trust me. And then we're going to trace the flowers and the wording onto the door hanger. And that's going to make it easier to paint. So you won't have to freehand your flowers. Ms. Pam says because of her first challenge, she now has a business. Oh, somebody, some of you have started a business. That's oh, wonderful. Pam Savage. Pam Savage, yes. Pam came to our first event that we had, the Southern Adornments Live Show. And I think she started her business shortly after that. Pam Hastings says, I really enjoyed participating in workshops. They taught me that I was able to paint and highlight without difficulty. Aw, Megan Lewis, thank you for that. I can't even read all of these. They're going by so fast. Good, they? they are. I'm going to go and screenshot some of these for later to, to read them. Okay, next thing. I completely forgot that the inside of our little birdhouse hidey hole, like where the bird goes in, is also supposed to be green. So let me paint that. And I may actually do a little bit of shading with this darker green that's in here so that it looks kind of shadowed like it's darker in the back of that birdhouse hole. But if that part intimidates you when you sit down to paint it, just paint it all solid green. You don't have to get fancy with it. It's your project. You get to do it however you like. Okay, paint it all green. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to pick up on the corner of my brush just a little bit of that darker green. And let's see, let's shade that in kind of on this side of the hole. So I'm just making sure to keep the part that's got the dark green on the right hand side. I have to be a little careful though because I've started to get a paint ridge going around the edge and I don't want to make the hole bigger and bigger. For those of you who've painted before, you know how that happens. It just starts to, it starts to push out and out and out. It's probably because I got too much paint on my brush. So one other thing you can do is you can kind of like scoop it inward a little bit then scrape a little on a paper towel. And then go back and smooth it out a little better. Let's 
So now that I've got most of it on there, I'm gonna pick a little bit more of that lighter green up to go around this other side and give it sort of a second coat and to kind of just blend everything. Okay, so the Template Club, if you're asking what that is, um, we, we release at least 20, if not 25, new designs similar to this every month in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. Now, the retail price on those is $7. Well, the, the, if you're a member of the Template Club, I'm having a hard time with words today. Can you tell? If you're a member of the Template Club, you can get all of the new designs that we release every month for just one low cost of $35. So that's like a 70 to 80%. I'm terrible at math, but I, I've, I figured, figured it out once before. It's like a 70 to 80% savings. So if you are obsessed with all things door hangers or creating things with templates or you need laser cutting files, the Template Club is an amazing deal because you get 20 or 25 every month for just $35. And you can paint them and sell them um, and make stuff, and or you could teach paint parties with them, whatever you wanna do. We just started a business to opening in April. That's exciting. Congratulations. Okay, we've got our green laid down. Let's go ahead and paint our watering can. I'm gonna use this desert turquoise color from the rainbow paint pack. It's kind of more of like a bluish turquoise. I really like it. And I think it's going to look really good with this yellow. And again, I'm not having to freehand this. You guys may not be able to see it, but the, the lines for this little watering can are still here on the wood. And I can still see them through the paint. So I'm just painting inside the lines. Whoops, I got a little outside the lines just there. It's okay. We'll just make that spout just a wee bit wider. <laughs> Debbie says the Template Club is definitely worth the money. Thank you for that. It's called Desert Tur Turquoise, Denise. It's in the Rainbow Paint Pack that we were talking about. And the Rainbow Paint Pack has um, 12 colors in it, and eight of the colors are ones that we are using for the workshop, uh, the Happy Flowers Workshop design that's on the wall behind me. The only colors that are not in that paint pack that you're gonna need for the workshop is um, white and a light gray and then a light brown. Uh, I think sable brown and gray sky are the two colors that I used. But if you have a gray and a brown, I'm sure they will work just fine. Or if you even have white and black, you can mix it and make gray. Good night, Terry. She says it's her bedtime. She's got to go to work later. That's hard when you work a night shift to kind of get used to going to sleep during the day. My mother-in-law does it. She has for years. I think some people do, are just made for it. They're better at it. I'm, I would not be one of those people. Like Cinderella, I turn into a pumpkin at midnight. Ask my husband. I'll be fine until midnight, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, i got to go to bed. <laughs> Alma says, I just ordered the rainbow paint pack and the new brushes. Wonderful. The brushes she's talking about are these brushes with the blue handles. Um, I would recommend on the, it, getting the ones that say uh, base coating. It's like a base coating set and the beginners set. The base coating set is going to have these larger brushes, like the ones you need for the background colors. And the beginner set will have like one this size and then we'll also have some that are like round tip and some other shapes that you're going to need. But it's a great set to have on hand. Okay, I'm like scooping every last drop of this color out of this egg carton. But I think I'm still going to need a little more. So I'll squirt it right on here. Be careful if you're squirting paint directly on your door hanger, though, because we have a tendency to squeeze out more than we actually even need. And so if you squeeze out too much, then you may have a mess on your hands. 
So go lightly with it. Let's dry it. Hi, Diane from Reno, Nevada. I'm in Kentucky. What else do you guys want to talk about? Do you have any painting questions? By the way, something, if you missed last Tuesday's live, mm -hmm. you should go back and watch it. Are you giggling at me? Yeah, yeah, it was a big time last week. <laughs> last Tuesday was awesome. We did an open Q&A, and I didn't paint, except I did have a piece of cardboard handy to kind of demonstrate a couple of things. All we did was answer questions about painting and door hangers. So there are like a hundred nugget bombs dropped in that live video. So go back and watch it. If you can't find it, it's linked on my YouTube channel. Um, but it's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of just Q&A, me answering your questions. And we dropped so many little nuggets in that video that at the end we were like, what did you learn today? And I mean, boom, boom, boom. The comments were filling up with people being like, I learned this and I learned that. And oh my goodness, this was such a game changer. So it is a must watch video. Go back and watch last Tuesday's. Brenda says, last Tuesday was really fun. By the way, who watched last Tuesday? Did you love that? If you loved it, I think we may start doing it about once a month. Let's do happy mail for the people who watched. Yeah, let's do happy mail. Drop a comment, and we will give happy mail, and let us know what you thought about last Tuesday's video. Okay, you've got a question on what kind of brushes you use, and do you only use brushes, or do you also use paint pens? I do also use paint pens, but I don't use those until the end when I'm doing the finishing touches. Um, I have a variety of brushes over here, but the ones I tend to go to the most are these large base coating brush brushes that DecoArt sells. Um, I also have a couple of fancy ones. You guys may have seen me using this one earlier that's got the glitter on the handle. Um, and then I use a lot of smaller flat tip brushes and the little pointed round tip brushes, but these are all available in like the beginner set on the DecoArt website. It was very informative. Last week was great. Wonderful. Thank you guys for letting me know. You love the detailed instructions. Tammy says, I wish I'd seen it. Well, you can go back and watch it. It's on YouTube. I have it on my channel there. I think it's like only the second video down because it was, I haven't gone live since then. So it should be like one of the most recent videos. By the way, if you just now tuned in here on TikTok and you have missed the first half of this, as soon as it's over, I always go over and load it onto YouTube. So the recording of this will be available on YouTube if you didn't get to watch the whole thing. Kim Hastings wants to know if you do a Q&A at night sometime. Ooh, that's an idea. A Q&A at night. We could do that. Because she works during the day. Yeah. Or would it help if, if it's going to be a daytime Q&A, would it be helpful if we did a post maybe the day before or something on the page asking for questions in advance? That way you guys that aren't able to watch live could at least still submit your question. All right. Here's your winner. All right. Our happy mail winner is Miss Kelly Rye. R-I-E. Is that how you say your name? Or Rie. Kelly R-I-E. Does DecoArt sell just filbert tips? Um, I don't know if they have a set that's just filberts. I, I'll have to go look. But they do sell them in some of the sets because I do have some of them over here. I just don't remember which set they came from. On TikTok, Miss My Daisy Duck gets her first visit from California. Well, hello and welcome. Okay, we've got two coats now on our cute little watering can. Let me hold it up so you guys can kind of see what we've got going on so far. We still need to paint our flowers and do the words Happy Spring and the stem on our flower. But I'm going to paint the flower pink first. And we're going to use the carousel pink that's in the rainbow paint pack. <laughs> they think that would be great for us to gather questions beforehand. Cheryl says, I started watching you two years ago. I've learned so much. You're so inspiring. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. Allison loved last Tuesday's live Q&A. You guys are great. This is such a happy color of pink. It makes me think of Barbie. I'm a 90s kid. I was born in the 80s, but I'm definitely a 90s kid, and I played with Barbies a lot growing up. So every time I see a certain color of pink, I'm like, oh, that's like Barbie pink. <laughs>
You love this design. Kate, Katie, this one's called the Spring Bird House. So if you can't find it, because it's not one of the newest ones, we released it two or three weeks ago. So you may have to use the search bar to find it. Or actually, just click the link up in the video description. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's easier. But if you're searching for it, it's Spring Bird House. Do you guys have any painting questions that I could answer while I paint today? My Facebook comments have stopped. Facebook comments have stopped coming in. I don't know if you guys suddenly went really quiet or if somebody or if the Facebook live stream messed up a little bit, but maybe they'll kick back in here in a minute. This really pops against this yellow. I like it. That part's going to be green, so I guess I don't have to paint that. Okay, let me dry it and do a second coat real quick. <laughs> Amy says, I'm here. Lisa says, I'm here. Okay, you guys are here. <laughs> hey, Linda. Okay, good. <laughs> I think it's just a Leo over there who's <laughs> monitoring the comments. Hers suddenly just keeled out. <laughs> I've mesmerized, mesmerized you guys with my painting, and now you've gone quiet. Okay, Chelsea says, kind of a painting question. What color green would you use for a watermelon skin? Hmm. Um, hold on. Because watermelons are, it's kind of like a, uh, yes. Well, is this it? There's two greens that I'm thinking of. There's one called jewel green, and I don't even know if I have that one over here. Maybe I do. Either one of these would be really good. This is jewel green and holly green, but holly green has been retired from deco art, so you may not be able to find it in stores anymore, but that's a pretty one. See how I've got the dot on the bottom? That lets me know and reminds me that that's a retired color. But this one is actually even better, and it's one of deco art's newer colors. It's called jewel green. Isn't that pretty? It's like the perfect color for a watermelon rind. So jewel green is my go-to, or would be my go-to if I was painting a watermelon today. Ashley says, I can't find the rainbow paint set. Oh, you went You went to the front store. Oh, okay. So in the search, they need to just put Tamra. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, the link up in the video description goes to the DecoArt website store. So when you go there, go to the search bar and type in Tamra, T-A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, and it'll find it for you. Somebody on TikTok wants to know about for a lemon. What color would be for a lemon? Oh, a lemon. Yes. Um, This one. I don't even know if they make this in like a regular deco art color, but this is the patio paint, sunshine yellow. It's a very nice lemony color. I like it a lot. Did you forget one of the petals? I can't see what you're doing. No, because there's a stem coming down right here, so that's why it looks kind of funny right now. It does look kind of weird, but when the stem is painted, I think it'll make sense. All right, put a second coat on this because we can still see that wood grain through the pink. Someone on TikTok says they used to buy all of them. Thanks to you, she's now painting and cutting. Oh, wonderful. So you, she's saying she used to pay, uh, buy the wooden blanks? No, she used to buy all of the door hangers. Oh, she used to buy them painted. painted and now she makes them herself. Wonderful. Says, Thanks to your teaching, I now can cut, paint, and sell my own. That's exciting. Bonnie wants to know how you store your paint on your table. So I actually have a um, two-tiered Lazy Susan. I can't pull it into the video right now. But it, it's like a rotating two-tiered tray. And I got it from Sam's Club like four years ago. And everybody asks me where I've gotten it. I have searched the internet high and low for one just like it and cannot find one. But I love it, and it, it's what I keep all my paints on on the table. And I get asked about it every single time it's in a video. <laughs> I wish I could find one just like it somewhere else for you guys. But Sam's Club, it's where I got it a few years ago. Hey, Mary. Abby loves the blow dryer trick. I learned that years ago when I was doing paint parties. 
The ladies were sitting around chatting and eating snacks and waiting for paint to dry. Aaliyah, I'm pretty sure you were at one of those parties. <laughs> It was the one that I'm thinking of in particular was at a church and Aaliyah was there and it took four hours for us to get through those door hangers. And I mean, I was breastfeeding Charlie at the time and my breast milk started to leak. I had been there so long. And I, by the time I got home, I'm like, I got to figure out something that's going to help this paint dry faster because I got to wrap this up. We can't be here for four hours. Not to mention people's husbands started texting him and they're like, honey, are you coming home? How long is this paint party going to take? And so, yeah, the hair dryer hack is definitely helpful. <laughs> okay, for the stem on our flower, I think I'm going to actually mix together both of the greens that are in the rainbow paint pack. Because this one's too dark. And I feel like this one, I don't want it to be the same color as the trim in my house. So, we're just going to mix them together. And get sort of an in-between green. Brenda says the biggest thing she has learned from your videos is trust the process. Yeah, trust the process for sure. Because you're not, you may not be like instantly great at it the first time you sit down to do it. Or you may part way through, like right now, you might look at this and be like, oh, it's just not turning out right because you can't see the end of it while you're in the middle of it. And it kind of goes through a slightly ugly phase till you get to the good part. At my paint parties, I used to tell everybody, like, just, just be patient. When we get to the part where we add the finishing touches and the bow, You'll love the way it turns out. And almost always, they would be like, oh, you're so right. I love I love it now that we've added the bow and the finishing touches. But while we're in the middle of it is usually the part where everybody's like, ah, I just don't like it. It's not turning out well. So definitely trust the process. Hair dryer or heat gun, which do you like best? The heat gun, because this one is whisper quiet. It's called the Ranger Heated Craft Tool. And it's just so quiet. So I can keep talking on a Facebook Live while I use it. Um, I think it works faster. So it's not like heating up my craft room. <laughs> yes, at the end, the door hanger comes alive. I agree with that, Brenda. Do you think the decolor paint stands up to your elements or should we call it I always give it a coat of some sort of poly at the end. My favorite is the Deco Art um, Triple Thick Spray. Okay, I feel like this little flower looks really weird without a petal covering the stem. I don't know if the original design had one there or not, but I'm going to modify it and just make my own. <laughs> I'm going off book here. I'm adding a petal because I feel like it looks kind of weird. And it's going to take a second because it's not going to cover this green very good. Marie Mosley says, four hair dryers in a 1,200 square space with menopausal women. Be sure to have plenty of ice water. Yeah, definitely, Marie. Um, and the thing, too, that I've learned about using hair dryers at paint parties is that if you have too many of them going at one time, the lights are going to shut off. Like, it's going to blow a fuse. And everybody's going to be like, ah, what happened? And it's like, hang on, we just got to flip the breaker and only use one hair dryer at a time. <laughs> Or plug them into a different outlet. Okay, notice that pink did not cover the green very well, so we got to build on it. So we're just going to paint one little layer at a time, and we're going to dry in between every layer. And it may take five layers to cover that green, but it's okay. <laughs> just dry it in between each layer. Sharon says that looks much better. That skinny petal bothered me. <laughs> you know how sometimes you just keep looking at something and you're like, it just doesn't look right. That's what I was feeling like. Yes, I had to reset my breakers four times that night. <laughs> That's hilarious, Marie. What a party. Makes for some great memories, though. battery operated fans I just wouldn't think like I think the heat in the hair dryer is helpful for drying out the the water in the paint faster and it drives faster than just using a regular fan okay one more coat and I think we've got this green covered Tina thinks you need another leaf think I need another leaf we can add another leaf Whoops. 
Sharon says that skinny coat of all over <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. Uh, let me put another coat. I'm running out of this green. I'm gonna have to mix another another batch of this green because I had mixed together the two greens to create this color. Mixing paint is definitely easier in one of these little egg cartons because all the paint stays in one little spot. Whereas if you've ever tried doing it on a paper plate, you know it like roams all over the plate and then you've got your paint spread out and it starts to dry out faster and it's just frustrating. Letitia is from Hermanus Western Cape, South Africa. Wow, South Africa. It's a long way from here. There you go, I added another leaf per, your, per somebody's request. I can't remember who asked. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Welcome. Hey, Carrie. Okay, the center of our flower is kind of, um, the original color was like a light pink, but I'm thinking I might do something different. What if we do black with like little white polka dots or something? That might be completely different and it might add a whole fun element to this design. Leave it to me. I can't leave well enough alone. I love to change things up. Which makes it distinctly yours. It does. It gives it my own personal style and flavor and so you can do that too. If you ever want to change up a design, you don't have to follow exactly by the picture. Feel free to make it your own. I think I'm going to make this circle bigger too. Brenda's from Alberta, Canada. We're an international duo. Lots of international people. We are in Kentucky. Okay, I made the circle bigger and black. And then we'll add some white polka dots inside the circle. And then we have to do our lettering and our finishing touches, and I think we'll be done. You like the larger circle in the middle? Thank you for the feedback. Okay, I've got some white paint. I'm going to use this itty bitty sponge dauber, which is kind of lopsided. You see that? It's kind of sitting lopsided, but it's okay. It'll still work. These are some that we sell in our shop, um, and they're so handy for doing polka dots, but you're going to scrape like almost every bit of paint off the tip there. Um, and then you also want to have like a, a sticky note or something handy so that you can kind of do them halfway on and halfway off the circle. Y'all seen me do this little trick multiple times if you watch my videos, but that kind of keeps it from looking like they're floating in the middle of the circle. So, um, and then you're going to kind of create like a little triangular pattern out of your dots. So one, two, three, we're going to do the next one right here to complete the triangle. And you're giving your little sponge dauber a little twist. So put it down here. We're going to complete another triangle up here at the top. And another, and every dot that you create should complete a new triangle. Get a little bit more paint. And if it doesn't make a very good dot, just pounce it again. Melinda wants to know how the auction went for Uncle Cory. The auction went really good. I think we made roughly $650. And he's got another silent auction going on um, locally that will raise money also. Okay, let's go ahead and jump up here and do our lettering. Let's see. I think I'm going to use this brush. It's like a filbert tip brush, but it's real skinny. I think it's going to be good for this lettering. And we're going to use the Laguna color. Shanda says, what would we do without post-its? <laughs> post-its are awesome. I said Laguna. This is not Laguna. This is desert turquoise. Laguna is what I was using yesterday during uh, the live we did in Painter's Clubhouse. Which, by the way, let me show you this design. We taught this in the Painter's Clubhouse yesterday. How cute is this? So if you end up joining Painter's Clubhouse at the end of the month because it opens March 28th, this tutorial is one we just did. 
you'll still be able to go back and watch it, download the template for it. And then all the designs that we do in the Painters Clubhouse are exclusive to Painters Clubhouse for a year. So this design will not be for sale at shopdoorhangers.com until next spring. How cute is that? I love flowers. I love painting flowers. Okay, I, bear, I can still see the words, but I can barely see them. So you may see me doing a lot of squinting here to paint them in. But it says, hello spring. I'm not having to freehand this. So if you are not good at painting lettering, just know that with our designs, whether you're using a template or a wooden blank that we have sent you with the design laser etched in it, the lettering is super easy because you, all you have to do is paint inside the lines. So if you can color in a coloring book, you should be able to do the same thing, but with paint. It's just a little bit trickier with paint because you have to figure out which paintbrush to use and things like that. But hopefully if you're following along with my video, that whole process is gonna be a little easier for you. you to tell her more about Painters Clubhouse. Sure. Hey, Ashley. So the Painters Clubhouse is my membership where we teach door hanger painting every month. Um, it's coming up on its four-year anniversary. So we have lots of people watching today. Y'all feel free to give a shout out in the comments if you're a PC sister. Um, we teach two door hangers every month. Um, and they're usually, uh, well, they're not usually, they're always a new design that we have come up with that we think is going to be like trendy for that season um, and like I said the designs are exclusive for up to a year inside there and once you join not only do you get two new ones every month but you also get access to the library of the Painters Clubhouse where we have over a hundred different door hanger templates and tutorials available for you and uh, also technique videos like how to do hand lettering and bow making and other really helpful things that are going to help you on any project that you paint. <clears throat> but you also get access to a private Facebook group um, where the Painters Clubhouse hangs out. There are over 1,500 really sweet and generous ladies in there that are always very kind with their feedback and it's just a nice safe place to post examples or like post your work and get feedback because how many of you guys have ever created something at home and then you've been like I just want to show this to somebody I'm so proud of it I want to show it to somebody have you guys ever had that feeling and if you don't have anybody to show it to it's kind of a bummer because you're like you feel like you can't properly celebrate it until you've shown it to other people who can be just as happy about it as you are and the painters clubhouse is that kind of place you can post a picture of something you're super proud of and everybody is going to jump on that post and comment and be like, oh my goodness, I love the bow, or I love the way you did this or that, or I love the colors you used. And they're going to give you all these wonderful com comments. And what that does is it boosts your confidence in your painting abilities and in yourself. And it, it is such a game changer when it comes to learning a new skill, because it's going to, you're going to learn things that you can carry forward into the next project and the next. And sometimes uh, if you're struggling with something and you post on there and you're like, I just feel like it's missing something. Can you guys help me out? There's always somebody who can like give you a little bit of feedback and be like, you know, what if you added a flower right there? Or what if you did leopard print on that or polka dots or something like that? And they give you some helpful feedback. That kind of feedback can be so valuable. It's going to help you. Lori says your husband doesn't get much of a reaction. <laughs> My, yeah. Well, have you ever showed your door hanger to your husband and he's like, cool. Or that's nice. That's not the kind of response we ladies want. If, FYI, if any husbands are watching. That's not the kind of response we want from you if we are showing you something we made. Let me show you the proper response. Oh, that is awesome. Did you paint that? Like for real? Like, no, you must have bought that in a store. That kind of reaction is a proper reaction. <laughs> so if you aren't getting that kind of reaction from your husband at home, come join the Painters Clubhouse. And again, let me remind you, it's only open two times a year. We aren't open all the time. So I don't want you to miss out because you may be kicking yourself come April, uh, April the 2nd or whatever when it's closed and you can't get in 
and you're so frustrated because you're like, ah, oh, I've been wanting to learn to paint and I just didn't pull the trigger and join. I don't want that to be you. I want you to feel like you've made the best decision you could have ever made for yourself because you're, we tell you we're teaching you how to paint, but it's so much more than that. For our Painters Clubhouse sisters in the comments, I'm sure you guys can attest to this, that it builds an inner confidence in yourself that not many things can. Like, it's difficult to build confidence in yourself as it is. But something about learning to paint, um, specifically door hangers. I feel like door hangers are special in this way. Like, learning to paint will give you confidence. But door hangers, if you learn how to cut your own, that builds a whole different kind of confidence that you didn't even know you could have. Because you learn how to use a power tool. And then, next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, I... I can, I can make anything. And you feel like you have a new swagger when you walk into the, hob, to, into the I started to say Hobby Lobby, but I meant to say when you, you have a, a new swagger when you walk into Home Depot or Lowe's because you're like, you just watch me. I'm going to pick out my own wood and my own tools and I don't need you guys. I don't need you men to help me with this because I got this. What is the fee for Clubhouse? Oh, Painter's Clubhouse is $47 a month. And um, you can paint, and, or sorry, you can sell anything we're teaching you to paint. So if that fee sounds a little bit like it's going to be a stretch for you, just know that you can sell anything you're learning to paint. So if you just sell one door hanger every month, it's going to make it so much more affordable for you. And some of you guys are going to be selling way more than just one a month. Bonnie says, I can build a house. I don't know if I'm that confident, but <laughs> I could probably build a chicken coop. <laughs> Missy says, joining Painters Clubhouse is the best decision I've ever made. Thank you for that, Missy. What if you put a ladybug and some, oh, that would be cute. Yes. I don't think I have time for that today, but definitely you could add, you could add cute little butterflies or bugs or whatever you want to this design and make it your own. Let's do one more happy mail before we leave. And the question is, what is one little nugget you got out of today's video? What is like one little like thing that was like a light bulb moment for you or a game changer that you're going to take and use in your next painting project? Comment below what that was. Like, what did you learn today? And we will pick somebody to send some happy mail to. It's taking me a while to do this lettering, but I'm having to move nice and slow to make sure I... I'm actually in the lines because I can barely see them. Bonnie says, keep my confidence up. Trust the process, Pam. I love that. Wanda says, the fact that you can just paint over the lines. Yeah, definitely. It helps it makes you not be so scared because sometimes at paint parties that I used to have there were people who were like so terrified to like get outside the lines with the paint and I'm like guys it doesn't matter like it's just paint you can paint over it so definitely painting outside the lines okay Renee says flipping your brush at the edge to keep them cleaner Ooh, yes I didn't even realize I dropped that little nugget <laughs> yes, so true, Tammy. It has to go through an ugly phase before you can get to the beautiful um, design at the end. If you guys notice, I am re-dipping my paintbrush multiple times on every letter that I'm painting. That's the only way to get like a nice smooth application when you're doing letters. Okay, our happy mail winner is Susan Presley. Congratulations, Susan. She says, I don't always have to follow exactly. I can make it my own. 
She said, I can, all, I don't know if y'all heard Aaliyah on that, but she said, I don't always have to follow exactly as it's designed. I can make it my own. And that is so true. You guys could definitely, like, I didn't even follow the entire design. I, you know, painted the background yellow instead of green, like the original design had green. Um, I t changed the inside of the flower to black. I added an extra leaf. Um, I added some shading on the inside of this. Lots of things you can do. Using a post-it note to make a half a polka dot? Yes, that's one I use all the time. Okay, let's finish this up with some paint pens. You guys were asking about paint pens earlier. <clears throat> These are the Posca paint pens. This one is the three millimeter size, so it's nice and skinny and it's black. And I like to add these in because it's almost like adding doodles in after you've colored. Um, so don't think of it like you're adding, I think I've said this before, it's like adding the coloring book lines after you've colored, but I think I need to modify that. That's not exactly correct because coloring book lines are perfect, right? And they go right along the edge of the color. This is different. This is a little bit more whimsical and it's like adding doodles instead of color, coloring book lines. So if you've heard me say that in the past, I'm modifying that description now. So you don't want it to be perfectly drawn on. You want it to be a little bit sketched and imperfect. Let me show you what I mean. Up close on this watering can, do you see how they don't go perfectly to the edge of the color? They're kind of sketched on there and they just are whimsically drawn. So do it, do them rather quickly. so that you don't agonize too much over the design. You're just doodling them. And feel free to add in some squiggles and wiggles and fun little things like that. That's gonna give it personality. And yes, we're even doing them on our flower because it's gonna separate each individual petal. Oh, it's starting to not work as good. We gotta pump it on, the, on a, on a post-it note over here. We can even put some kind of down here along the bottom. And they can even be look kind of sketched. That's kind of what I was doing down there. So if you struggle to draw like straight lines, these don't have to be straight. They don't even have to be perfectly on what you're doing. Okay, now that we've added black, I wanna go back and add just a little bit of white. I think I'm gonna, I may pick the, whoop, I may pick a slightly bigger one with white. Cause sometimes the skinny, the three millimeter white doesn't show up very good. So I'm gonna use the, um, the five millimeter. And you have to shake it till you hear that clacky clacky noise. <laughs> that's, that's technical too. Janet says, thanks for that tip. That's where she was doing it wrong. She's following the cut lines. Yeah. Definitely makes a difference. And these little highlights like this are just to kind of add a little bit of like, to make everything kind of pop. So don't um, overthink where you're putting them. If you put them in a spot and you instantly regret it, just keep a baby wipe handy and kind of clean that up. Mine aren't even, all. sometimes they're just a little ziggy zag like I did on this little watering can. You see the little zigzag one? It's kind of like the lights bouncing off of it. And don't use those as much as you use the black lines, which I forgot to do the black on the outside of the birdhouse here. Okay, I think that's probably good. Super fun, right? So the, see how the white suddenly makes everything just look a little bit more alive? It really brought the whole design. So this is when you get past the ugly phase and you get to the final touches and you're like, oh, I like it so much better. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Is it missing somebody, anything? Somebody said they thought the lettering needed a little zip. Yeah, like if you wanna put um, like a highlight on the lettering, you can, or you could put, I feel like my lettering may need a second coat, which I may go back over it. I was gonna do it after the video, but if we're gonna add highlights, I need to do it now before I do um, 
anything else. So, because that turquoise, it covered pretty well, but not perfectly. I can still see some of the yellow through it. Oh, shoot. Look what I just did. I just cut my hand in the, t the turquoise paint that was not dry and transferred it and made a weird little dot. Let me get a baby wipe out. Clean it up. There we go. Good as new. Just don't get your hand in it again. Um, but add a second coat to your turquoise in, in some of the spots that look a little thin. You may not have to do the whole lettering again, but just to like these longer strokes. And then we can go back. And if you want to see, add a, would y'all like to see me add a highlight to it? I do think that would help kind of make it pop a little bit more. I think everybody's wanting a ladybug. All I keep seeing is people saying the ladybug idea. Cameron says yes, please. <laughs> is that yes, please to the ladybug or to the highlights? It's hard to tell in comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry, y'all. I hadn't had any breakfast. I didn't eat any breakfast. I skipped breakfast. In the middle of my life, my stomach started growling. I'm like, oh, no, we got to wrap this up. Tamara's got to eat. <laughs> so we're going to have to finish this up pretty quickly so I can go eat. Okay. Oh, I see one more stroke that needs it. That's yes on the highlights. Yes on the highlights. Okay. So we'll do this quickly so I can kind of show you. Um, I'm going to rinse my brush out. Get as much of that off there as I can and dry my brush on a paper towel. Then we're going to pick up a little bit of white and have your, pa have your paper towel handy because we're going to wipe some of that white off on the paper towel. Not all of it, but just dab it off so it's not too covered. And then just do a slight little stroke down each letter. And that's another way to add like a fun little brush stroke highlight. If you have too much on your brush, it's gonna look like a, just a big white streak. But if your brush is slightly dry already, like you've already wiped most of it off on the paper towel, it should look pretty cute. Let me show you. So it's kind of like dry brushing, and I'm using the same filbert tip brush that I did the lettering with, but you see it's got a teeny bit of white on it. And if you're worried you have too much white, dab it off on the paper towel. Do a practice stroke on a piece of cardboard if you're not sure if you have the right amount. And if it looks kind of dry brushed and kind of sparse and it's not like a solid streak of white, then you're probably good. And I'm also using a very, very light touch. I'm just barely letting those bristles skim across each letter. Going back and seeing if I missed any spots that feel like it needs a little bit. <clears throat> okay. What do you think? Did that help the lettering? I think it did. Made it look almost like 3D. Another thing you could do if your lettering feels a little flat and like it's not popping off the door hanger like you want it to is add a drop shadow. I've showed how to do that in some previous videos. Um, so you can do that. Everybody's wanting bugs added to the water spout or to the water watering can. All right. I think I'm going to call it quits for today, though. Um, would it be weird to put accents on the white dots? 
I think it would probably busy it up a little too much, but if you want to do that, definitely go for it. If you always, if you don't like it, just wipe it off with a pa uh, baby wipe. That's kind of my go-to. It's not my style, but it could be yours. All right, you guys, y'all have a great afternoon. If you want the supply list for this project, text LIST to my texting number, 270-207-9091. I do have it up in the video description here on Facebook, but if you're watching on TikTok, you may have to screenshot this. Again, this entire recording will be put on YouTube, um, so you guys can go back and watch it later. And if you want to get my Beginner's Guide to Painting Door Hangers ebook, it's completely free. It's linked on TikTok and in the video description above. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Go sign up for the Happy Flowers Workshop, too. We talked about that earlier. Bye, y'all.